quick introduction. My name is Brendan Goss. I am um, principal of Cognito Strategies, which is an advisory firm which helps businesses grow, helps them raise money, helps them wrap business cases around new ideas, new innovations, new concepts. Um, I just use this tagline to paraphrase Oscar Wilde somewhat. Commercialization is the triumph of imagination over experience. I was actually talking about marriage. Not that Oscar knew a whole lot about marriage, but perhaps from a, from a neutral observer's perspective, he had a point. And I think in broad terms, what I'm going to talk about is how it's important to align the factors of the key factors and the key metrics of your business in order not to be distracted by pipe dreams or by ideas that might seem great to you as an individual, as an entrepreneur or co-founder, but which ultimately make no business sense and certainly make no sense to your potential investors. So that's just a kind of, let's say, a catch-all expression. Before we talk about really positioning the business, it's worthwhile thinking about a strategy of positioning the business for investment. And I think a very important consideration to be aware of is that investment, whether it's investment in stocks and shares, whether it's investment in a company and equity, or as a punt as an individual, is a very good and instinctual gamble. So investors, there's no real hard science to investment. These things don't have any hard science to it. Individual punters taking a punt on stocks don't have a hard science to it. Investment is based on three very emotional responses. Fear, greed, and hope. Effectively, fear that you don't get in soon enough to make a quick buck. Greed, you get in because everybody else is getting in and the property, property crash is pretty, pretty good example of a greed effectively brought the market crashing down. And hope, hope that if you cling on long enough to your investment, that eventually it will turn and everything's going to be okay. But the fourth crucial one is, is, is the element that I think the investor or the co-founders or entrepreneurs themselves can, can control. It's a variable that they have power over in terms of positioning the business, in terms of narrating the story to the investors, and it's ultimately the most effective way of circumventing those more emotional instincts that investors operate on. So, when you're talking to an investor, potentially, you're really talking about the story behind your business. You're talking about giving the investor a real a really robust reason and a rational reason for investing in this business. You need to get the story right, you need to be compelling, you need to be realistic, you need to be hard-nosed. These guys are cynics, they hear the same story coming from the same people all the time, you're brought in for pitching sessions, you're on rotation, there is absolutely nothing unique about you, except perhaps your background, except perhaps your brilliant idea. But fundamentally, unless your idea is rooted fundamentally in robust, rational, commercial sense, they're not going to want to talk to you beyond that particular pitching session. And ultimately, you need to resonate, that story needs to resonate emotionally, so you need to be able to get them to park any anxieties they might have about making that investment. So, I'm going to talk in very broad terms from the perspective of two types of investment opportunity. One, the kind of standard startup story. And the other might be for a more, more established business, or a business that is looking for investment but is brought by two experienced entrepreneurs or experienced management uh, who investors will have a bit more confidence in. But essentially, listen, if you're a startup, I'm not sure how many of you potentially are in that space, but it's a common enough story. Have you got management experience? Maybe not. Are you generating revenue? In all likelihood, you're probably not. Are you going to change the world? Of course you're going to change the world, because you have to tell investors you're going to change the world. Otherwise, they have nothing to invest in. So how are you going to persuade them to part with the cash? As I said, you need to be realistic, rational and patient, because that process, that story, and that relationship that you build with investors is going to take a long time. It's going to take the guts of a year. They might tell you that you might get funds within three months, but you won't get funds within three months. It'll take at least nine months before you get any money at all. And once you take fees away, you'll have even less. So in real terms, that nine months has to be planned for strategically. 
if you don't have anything to show for them in terms of a legacy or at least in terms of a track record, but you're pitching something which is effectively conceptual as a business entity, you need to have some kind of commercial validation. And this is where commercialization is important. It's not just uh, commercialization from an academic research perspective, it's commercialization of a product or a service. You need to have some kind of market validation, some kind of feedback, a virtuous feedback loop from customers or from visa testing. You must have some kind of science and some kind of hard facts to be able to show to these investors that there's something they're worth investing in. Another, another way, really, I suppose, particularly with uh, technologies in the mobile space, for example, where your technology goes global, almost at the signature release, is that you show patterns or trends around customer acquisition, potential customer acquisition. You might not be generating revenue, you might not have any clients or customers on board, but you may have the potential to get out in front of a global audience in no time whatsoever. And if you can show those trends and those really underlying trends and themes, and if you can illustrate that there is potential to, to kick off a high adoption rate of users for your product or service, this is the kind of collateral you need to be bringing back to the investment community. It's the kind of hard science that they like. They'll take a punt on that basis because they'll know that you've done your research. And research is key. It's up to you as the co-founder or the entrepreneur to research your market and to be an absolute authority over that market if you're going to try and convince people to invest in it because these investors might be very broad and general investors. They might be industry or sector and specific. But they like a good story and if they believe you and if you've got credibility, it makes a big difference. So from the perspective of a business that might be already established and it's growing, or for that matter, as I mentioned, a company, a startup, which has been started up by experienced co-founders who potentially have already exited previously from other firms. The really key metrics are around future potential sales and your ability ultimately to understand how to run a business. Running a business is crucial. Most businesses nowadays, if they get investment, whether it's private equity or quite actually, more often than not, if it's, if it's venture capital, won't be making a profit and probably won't see or have sight of a profit for two or three years. What investors are looking at is cash flow. Cash flow is key, particularly in cloud and uh, software as a service models or whatever, PAS models, whatever it may be. Cash flow and cash flow management is key because if you've got a way of sustaining repayments to your business and growing business and acquiring customers, that in itself is it's almost considered as a secondary profit line for that. So that's an important, very, very important consideration. You need to be able to generate and build your margins. It's a crucial consideration. Ultimately, as well, if an investor is going to give you money, it's not just to pay down debt or to pay off loans or to pay yourself nice dividends. It's basically working capital. It's, it's money to help grow the business. So you have to understand and have a good grasp over what it takes to make that working capital work for the business and how to grow that business. It's all about value at the end of the day. Now just a couple of slides very briefly on our team generally will be organized and this is fairly standard stuff and I hope you can read that. It's pretty squished. It was lifted from another presentation. Oftentimes, for companies that are growing or scaling, the latter two around product and back office look after themselves because you've got domain expertise there, generally around engineering development and administration, looks after itself. But one of the key areas that's often overlooked by teams and by companies that are developing is the commercial side of that. The key, couple of key functions in this space, which a lot of businesses pay very, very little attention to. It's incredible how often it's overlooked because people just presume the business will look after itself. The business doesn't look after itself. It needs to be maintained, it needs to be husband. In terms of marketing and sales, they're very distinct disciplines. They're not the same. But people often presume sales and marketing are one and the same. But they're not. They require different skill sets. A salesperson is a very different person from a marketing person. So it's important to be able, at least when you're building your team, if you take on investment to identify the deficits in terms of the skill sets you have in-house and ensure that those skill sets are addressed. Qualified leads are crucial. The marketing person's primary role is to get qualified leads and close them. The sales guy, his job is to close the deal, to go chase it. He's a hunter. He survives on commission. 
traditional. That's how they work. Very different person from a marketing person. The sales guy is an instinct that person. Ultimately, customer success, crucially for technology businesses in an incredibly competitive world. Customer success, keeping your customers happy, giving your customers a reason to buy and to continue to acquire your products and services on an ongoing basis. Vitally important. It's called upselling. Creating value within the product service range that you already have and basically saving you a huge amount of money by selling to existing customers rather than have to spend time and waste money going out to find new customers that have never heard of you before. Which, of course, ultimately you hopefully will have the resources to do, but it's not the most cost effective way of doing it in the short term. Keep your customers happy. They're always right, especially when they're wrong. So just to sum that up, number of qualified leads produced, cost per qualified lead, key metrics to keep an eye on. Percentage of, of uh, leads closed by sales, and the churn of existing customers and overall customer satisfaction. Really important considerations. And not that difficult to achieve, but it just requires a bit of thought and a bit of reflection, and an acknowledgement by management that maybe your skill sets lie elsewhere, and that you go out to the market, and you find and identify somebody who can actually do what these particular roles entail. What do VCs expect? Let's just talk about VCs. I'm not going to go broadly into the investment space. There's lots of other people talking about investment. But listen, VCs go in at a low valuation. They want their money out at a high valuation. They want companies that have a demonstrable return or growth potential. And they want to make a shadow of money for themselves. So that's pretty much what a VC wants in essence. What do, we, what do VC wants at the end of the particular journey, and ideally something you need to prepare for as an, as a, as a, an entrepreneur or as a company director, is that VCs will want to get their cash out first. They want to be sure to position themselves for as healthy an exit as possible. So you need to be very agile and flexible in terms of how you prepare yourself and the business as the business grows in an ideal world, of course. ESOP, you need to position your your shareholder earnings for your staff very carefully because they get diluted as well. The way your ESOP is managed has an effect on the valuation of the company as well. As the valuation changes as you take on more investment, the proportion of ESOP will also change. So we need to be prepared in terms of how you put value on the business. More technical terms about drag and tag and reverse investing and so on. Considerations about what the investors expect of you as the business grows and in terms of how they position themselves in five years hence when they want to get out of the business. Again, they want to make sure that if they're investing in you as an individual, as the person who's developed and led this company, that you're not going to ditch it after two years. Because if you do, there are going to be penalties. That's what investing is all about. So be careful about what their expectations are of you as you develop that relationship. You're going to be sitting on the board as well, so it's very important to make sure that your relationship is a positive one and a, and a healthy one. These are other sources of, of debt, traditionally we're, we're familiar with. Bank debt if your business is big enough to sustain repayments. Private equity if your business is big enough to take on a chunk of money to either grow rapidly and scale rapidly or else go acquire another business as a bolt on, which will lead to uh, obviously an enhanced balance sheet as well. And the, the alternative debt market also is, is developing and maturing around peer to peer lending, linked finance, good finance, etc. etc. Um, and also alternatives around invoice discounting. So there are numerous ways to, to raise money, but ultimately when you're raising money, it's all about telling a story. So the story begins at the beginning. All right, yeah. A couple of key things to remember in summary. You've got to build a robust team and a vision. You've got to create a commercial story that has an emotional re resonance with the investor. The investor has to be comforted. They need to know that those three instinctive fears and, and, and bases for making an investment, no matter what it is, are mollycoddled somewhat. Once you have them in the palm of your hand, it's up to you to guide the story. And ultimately, husband your resources and create value for the business. Because as you create value for the business by looking after the micro elements of the business, the business will grow, it will grow in an organic way. And if you've got the cash from the investor, and if you're smart enough to use that cash wisely, and you'd be well positioned to exit that business in years to come and you'll do very well for yourself. So thanks very much.